How's it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins, and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins from Australia. In today's video, we're going to be exploring and counting down the most valuable three pence coins that were ever produced for circulation in the land down under. From King Edward VII all the way to Queen Elizabeth II, we will leave no stone unturned in our quest to uncover these incredible pieces of Australian numismatic history. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can see my new content as it is being released. Also, make sure to stay to the end of the video if you guys would like to see the most rare and valuable three pence coin on the list. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it and count down the top 10 pre-decimal era Australian three pence coins. Let's get it, guys. Australian coins can have several different mint marks which indicate where the coin was produced as well as affecting the coin's value and rarity. Some of the mint marks that we will see featured on this list are as followed. The M mint mark represents the Melbourne Mint which was established in the year 1872. The Melbourne Mint is the oldest and largest operating mint in Australia. Coins minted with this mark are generally more sought after by collectors due to their historical significance. Then there is the S mint mark, which indicates the coins were minted at the Sydney Mint, which was in operation from 1855 to 1926. The Sydney Mint played a significant role in Australia's early currency production. Coins marked with an S mint mark are also extremely popular amongst Australian coin collectors. And then the P mint mark is used for coins minted by the Perth Mint, which was established in 1899. The Perth Mint is one of the oldest mints in Australia, it primarily produces bullion coins and is known for its high quality gold and silver coins. This mint mark is typically only used on certain limited edition or collector coins. These mint marks can indicate the location of where the coins were produced and can also affect their rarity and value. Coins without a mint mark generally mean they were minted in Canberra, where the Royal Australian Mint, which was established in 1965, is located. So as I start this list off, I'm going to work my way from number 10 being the least valuable all the way up to number one being the most valuable Australian three pence coin on this list. So what do you say we start things off with number 10, which is going to be the 1942 S. Now on this 1942, you are looking for an S mint mark indicating that it was struck at the Sydney Mint. In terms of value, it is worth around $15 for an MS60 and can be worth all the way up to $409 for an MS66. The values that I'm giving you for the coins on this list today are in Australian dollars. I will leave the exchange rate for Australian to American dollars up on the screen right now for you. But $409 for an MS66 example of the 1942 Sydney Mint three pence coin. Now for anyone that wasn't aware, the Australian government would regularly contract the United States Mint to produce coins. Any coins produced at the Denver Mint would have a D Mint mark. Any coins produced at the San Francisco Mint would also have an S Mint mark. But this S Mint mark is different and slightly distinguishable from the Sydney Mint mark. But number 9 on this list is going to be the 1943 D, which indicates that it was struck at the Denver Mint in the United States Australian 3 pence coin. In terms of the low end value, it's worth around $14.90 for an MS60 example. And this bad boy can be worth all the way up to $800 for an MS67. It is not worth as much for a lower grade for around an MS66. It's worth around $134, but there are some examples out there that are graded MS67 and they can sell for some good money. So that is for the 1943 Denver Mint three pence coin. Number eight is going to be the 1959 and you don't need to look for any mint marks to identify this one. It isn't super valuable on the low end. It's only worth around $8 for an MS60, but this can actually be worth all the way up to $1,310 for an MS67. It's not quite as valuable as you go down in the tiers. It's only worth around $100 for an MS66, but that is a huge price jump from $94 to $1,300 for an MS67. So definitely a good one to keep an eye out for. If you can cherry pick this for a high grade example, you could definitely turn a really good profit. And that is for the 1959 three pence coin with no mint mark. 
Number seven is going to be the 1942 D Mint Mark, indicating once again that it was struck at the Denver Mint in the United States. Now, in terms of the low end value, it's worth around $15 for an MS60, and it can be worth all the way up to $1,560. For an MS66 example. So this one is more valuable in a lower grade than some of the ones previously mentioned. Even at an MS66, it is worth over a thousand dollars. And that is for the 1942 Denver Mint three pence coin. Number six is going to be the first King George V coin featured on this list, and that is the 1911. You don't need to identify any mint marks on this one. You just simply need to find the date of 1911. Now, these ones are starting to get a lot more valuable on the low end. It can be worth around $630 for an MS60 example. These coins that I'm mentioning from this point on are going to have a premium. Even if they are at the bottom of the Sheldon scale, they will still be worth a few dollars, probably $20 to $30, depending on how desirable they are and also their condition. But in terms of the high end value for the 1911, it can be worth up to $5,500 for an MS66 example. And that is for the 1911 King George V three pence coin. Number five is gonna be another King George V and that is gonna be the 1912. Now you don't need to find any mint marks for the 1912, you just simply need to find the date and it makes it pretty easy as well because the 1911 and 12 are both consecutive years and they are both pretty rare and valuable as well. In terms of the low end valuable, this one is actually just about twice as valuable as the 1911. It can be worth around $1,380 for an MS60 example. So I'm sure you can get anywhere from 20 to $50, even if this thing is beat up and been put through the meat grinder, people probably still want it for their collections. And this bad boy can be worth all the way up to $6,200 for an MS65 example. And that is for the 1912 King George V three pence coin. Number four on this list is gonna be another 1942, and this is the rare of the two 1942 three pence coins that you can look for, and this is the 1942 without a mint mark. Now, this one can be worth around 1,100 for an MS60 example, and it can be worth all the way up to 6,300 for an MS65. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, you could get a premium if it was at the bottom of the Sheldon scale. If it's in a G or an F condition, I'm sure you can get anywhere from $20 to $50, depending on how bad the person wants the coin from you. And that is for the 1942 King George VI Australian three pence coin with no mint mark. Now, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, usually Australian coins struck with an M mint mark are much more desirable and valuable to collectors. And the next two coins featured on this list will have an N mint mark. So number three is going to be the 1918 with the M mint mark indicating that it was struck at the Melbourne Mint. In terms of value, the 1918 M can be worth around 1,870 for an MS60 and all the way up to $6,900 for an MS65. If you were to find any of these coins and they scored any higher than the grade that I am mentioning, I'm sure you would see some massive price jumps and these ones would even push the $10,000 mark. And that is for the 1918 M Mint Mark Melbourne three pence Australian coin. Number two is gonna be the 1917 Melbourne Mint three pence coin. In terms of the low end value, it's not quite as valuable as the 1918. It's worth around 893 for an MS60 example. But this one actually has a very high graded known example at MS67 that has sold for $12,300 in the past. So it isn't actually as valuable as the 1918, but it does have a previous auction record that exceeds the value of the 1918. So the 1917 and 1918 Melbourne Mint three pence coins are definitely some of the rarest ones ever produced. And if you do happen to find one and it scores anywhere in the mint state range, you could easily make thousands of dollars. But we have already made it to number one on this list. I really hope you guys enjoy these videos and find them helpful. If you do, please smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can follow along with my new content as it is being released. And then what do you say we get into number one on this list, which is going to be the most valuable Australian three pence coin that you can find. And that is the 1922 King George V. And you do need to identify an error or variety for this one. This is the two over one variety. Now to identify this, you need to look at the last digit in the numerals for the date 1922. And if it looks like there is a two stamped over the one, it is super, super prominent for this one 
one, so it should be very easy to tell, then you have yourself one of the most rare and valuable Australian coins of all time that can be worth up to $65,000 for an MS60 example, and the highest known graded example has sold for around $95,000 in the past for an MS62. So if you're ever to find one of the 1922 two over ones and it scored any higher, especially between an MS65 and MS67, this could be a million dollar coin. In terms of the low end value, I'm sure it still holds a premium. You could probably easily get hundreds or thousands of dollars, even if it is in the worst condition possible. So definitely a good one to keep your eyes out for the 1922 two over one Australian three pence coins. What do you guys think about all of these three pence coins? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video? Please let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.